Hello, welcome to Cooking with World Chef and a session with Sterling White Halibut. My name is Thomas Torstensen and I'm a sales director in Sterling White Halibut. And I also have my good colleague and Sterling Chef here. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Frode uh, and I'm the official Sterling Chef and I've been working with Sterling White Halibut for many years. And we are really looking forward to give you a good lesson in how to prepare our fantastic fish that we have here. And uh, Thomas, do you have yeah. any facts about uh, sterling that you can tell us uh, before we start cooking? Yes, of course. Uh, sterling uh, was established in 2001, so we are actually 20 years this yes. year. Uh, we produce this year 1500 tons and are a full value chain company. Our main markets are uh, Norway, US and UK, but we also have a good colleague in Sweden, Ola Nyström, who, who serves uh, Europe as well. Yes, uh, and for this session we have prepared to do uh, three dishes uh, together with you, so we will see how we prepare our fantastic fish. First, a little bit about uh, our uh, fantastic uh, fish that we are so proud of and also that this is a farmed halibut that is in controlled production so we know exactly from uh, babies to ready fish so it's we know everything about the fish so we can uh, make sure that you we can track everything and you will see that we have a good size on this fish and actually um, the different sizes we have is one to three kilo, three to five, five to seven and seven plus. But this uh, fish is seven kilo and it's five years. And it takes five years to make this fish. And you maybe didn't know that, but uh, halibut is growing very slowly. They take very long time to grow. And that's important to know because we as chefs should t have respect for using this time when we cook it to understand that it have take five years to make it so we cannot destroy it because it's a hard work behind this fish and halibut is swimming uh, around and they are really lazy fish so they don't eat so much so they eat very uh, randomly and then they w s sleep and then they rest and then they go and eat again so it's very very silent life of a halibut. It's very nice to be a halibut. I think that should be something for us also to be. That's correct. Uh, and also to have a nice uh, environment. So we have these deep fjords in Norway that we are having our halibut inside. And the, ha the fjords are 700 meters deep. So we have a lot of water that goes through the, our, um, uh, our fisher, um, uh, fish nets and that m makes us uh, having this fish so nice and clear. And uh, the cold water gives also a nice uh, environment for the fish to have a good fish health. Um, another thing about our halibut is that we are very, uh, very concerned that you are using the whole fish. So we are making sure that you will have, have to use the whole fish from head to tail. And for you using the whole fish, we will show you how we use uh, the whole fish because that's important for us. Uh, and also that uh, sustainability is very important for us uh, in growing sterling white halibut. Uh, and of course, this uh, fish, we want to keep it very cold. And that's very important when you have bought a fantastic fish that you keep it cold. So now this fish, we can see on the fish, we are very approved we, that it's yes. nice. But now we should take it away, put it back in the refrigerator. Maximum four degrees uh, Celsius is a perfect temperature. So b between zero and four degrees is perfect to store our halibut. And store it like this. Uh, and it's, you have maybe seen, if you have got some halibut, that you have some slime on the fish. And that's a very good sign when it has slime. Because the slime is protecting the fish and taking care of the fish until you will go and uh, clean it and use it. But I will take a fish now that I have been cleaning and take the head off and I will tell you a little bit about this. So Thomas, can yep. you bring this back to the fridge? Of course I will, of course. Okay. So here is um, a fish with the head off and the head we're gonna of course use 
uh, for make stock for one of our dishes. Uh, the three dishes that we're going to make is that we're going to make one taste that is raw of our sterling halibut. We're going to make one that is pan fried and we're going to bake one stick or one piece of the whole halibut in the oven. So we have three different courses and the head we're going to make a li nice little stock that we use for our sauce or you can use it for a soup or like a consomme. It's fantastic, much a lot of taste in our, our uh, halibut so we are proud that we can use all of the halibut to make sure that you have a good taste of our fish. So I will start now with uh, preparing the cuts that gonna, we're going to use. And uh, if you see here, we have um, the halibut has this uh, very nice line uh, in where it's going to be cut. So we have four fillets. We have two on this side and two on the other side. Another nice thing to know about halibut that is the halibut is born like swimming uh, like a salmon or like an other fish. But after five weeks, one of the eyes is turning around and it becomes flat the rest of the life. That's, uh, you can see, it's a big uh, little, sp it's a little more spot between the eyes on a sterling halibut than on a flounder. Okay, um, so, um, when you have this nice fish, we're going to use some paper to dry the fish. Because it's better to dry it and so, so you don't have anything uh, splitting around for you. Okay, then we're going to make our steak that we're going to put for the oven. And that's uh, this uh, size I want to have on this. So we cut down here. Then you can see, fantastic fish. Hello, Froda. I'm back from the cooler now. You, <laughs> That's you good. need some help. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can put um, a nice little uh, tray for this that we're going to use for the oven. Yeah, I have the tray over there. And then, um, for all of you, it's important to know that uh, we are taking uh, notice that people, when they work with fish, they are using a lot of water. If you use a lot of water when you do fishing uh, with, do with the fish, you actually get the bacteria around. So try to use not so much uh, water. Try to have it, keep it dry uh, when you work with the fish. And then uh, we have, of course, a nice piece of the fish uh, left here. And um, you can see our sterling halibut is very white in the flesh. And all the fat that is in the halibut is between the skin and the fish. So to keep the skin on when you prepare the fish, we'll get, th then you will get more moist and nice halibut. It's very important to know. And um, we're going to ma make this a uh, good piece for using uh, today as our raw dish and, our, and one pan fried dish. And you can see it's easy to cut because we have one bone in the middle of the fish that we have to take care of and that's the only bone we have to take care of. Uh, then you have white and nice fish ready there. We're going to put in, uh, in, um, in further, um, further preparation. Also want to mention that you can now also make a nice little uh, cut here that is nice to show you. Is that you Cut like this, and then you can have like small, nice steaks like this. That also is very nice, and you keep very much the 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 moist of the fish and the the juice that we want to have in the fish when you do it like this. So take a good uh, look on this. How nice the halibut is. And we are really, really, really proud that we have this fish, huh? Yes. And this is like for one person. Yep. Yes. Yeah. It's perfect yep. for one person. And this we're going to cut more now, but then it was to show you how we can uh, continue with cuts in 
and have different cuts on the halibut. Okay, then we can uh, take this away and put away. it in the fridge. Of course, of course. And then I will show you how we're going to do the first dish. So for now, we're going to prepare the um, uh, nice um, piece for pan frying. I think this will be a nice piece for that. I think so. I think so, yeah. Um, and then we're going to make one that is for having as a sashimi. Um, maybe we can pan fry two pieces, one small and one big. Um, for sashimi, it's important to know that when you're going to cut raw fish, uh, sterling white halibut is, uh, is um, certified correct. for serving raw without freezing. That's correct. You can tell a little bit about that? Yeah, it's only, uh, it's only white fish that you can serve without freezing it before. It's free of parasites and uh, a very high-end product, so it's perfect for raw consumption. But yes. uh, Frode, about the tail here, yep. when do you want to put it in the oven? Uh, we can wait a little bit All right. before we go You are the chef, I yes. don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think you know, but um, yes, yes, yes. it's <laughs> important to make sure when you do it with the halibut is that you don't overcook it. So we don't start too early with preparing things. Okay, uh, then for the raw dish, uh, we're going to make the sashimi cuts. Then I important that we, we bring the, the fat on. So we can have the taste of the fat. I think uh, this is a nice portion for have a taste of the raw fish. Of course, we don't waste anything, so we take care that we have everything here. Do you want a plate on yes, this one? Yes, a little plate, and yep. then I will tell you about how we're going to make the dish. Uh, in Norway, we are very famous for our apples. We have a lot of apples. Um, and the apples in Norway is quite sour because we don't have so much heat in the summer. So we have very acid high acidity in our apples. And that make it, sh make it good for making juice. This is fresh. And this apple juice has been reduced also. So it's half, uh, uh, half a liter becomes two, two and a half deciliter. So it's uh, reduced quite well. And then you have very good um, apple uh, taste in this one. So we're going to put on the, on the fish. I'm going to mix it. Inside here. So you are like using this apple instead of like Lime or things like that, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, correctly. Yeah. Because uh, you know all that we can use lime and lemon. And then we have this uh, kind of uh, ceviche. Yeah. And you will get also the cooking going on on the fish because of the acidity in the, in the um, citrus. But in apples, this cooking also happening, but it's happening not so fast as in, in uh, with, uh, with uh, lemon and lime. So a little bit of this apple juice on. And horseradish, another Nordic thing, our Nordic wasabi, uh, we're going to put on. Um, and I have to grate it with um, this one. And I also had put some salt. You maybe saw that I put some salt. I don't know if I tell, tell you that I used it. but uh, Okay. Uh, as you see, very simple, simple uh, dish, but it's the taste of the halibut. And it's the taste of Nordic uh, and Norway f flavors. And we're going to put this on a little uh, plate here now and, um, and see if um, we can maybe put on some flowers from the garden also.
this. And then I change the, um, the cutting board because when you are finishing with the fish, you can change the cutting board because when you go and work with vegetables, you have to have a clean and new cutting board. But uh, Frode, yep. we are using apples, I see. Yeah. Uh, isn't that a fun fact that we are using like apples from the same fjord as the fish are swimming in? Of course. Yes. Uh, so um, uh, on the on the light of the fjords, these apples has been uh, growing, and uh, now is the apple season in Norway is uh, in, at its end. But it's fantastic apples that we have now, and uh, you should eat at least one apple a day, uh, and. Um, the apple juice and I will also assemble a little bit apples and also if you find uh, a little bit uh, flowers in the fridge oh, that we can put on the top. Yes, of course. And this is on also to underline that we are using um, apples in the dish. A little bit apple on the top there, and also some flowers. And then you have a nice little sashimi dish for a good taste of the Nordic uh, uh, culture. And also, of course, the best way to taste fish is to taste it raw. And exactly the sterling white halibut, when it's raw, fantastic, fresh from the sea, fantastic fish to, to cook with. So this is one of the dishes. And then you want yes. to put this on in the oven now? Yeah, can I do that, please? Yes. No, please do that. And oh, thank you. But we just give them a little notice that, look at this fish. We don't put any oil, any salt, any butter, nothing. We just put it in the oven just like this. We use a little bit um, of a baking sheet under because that's help us to clean after. And then um, uh, with preparing the fish whole like this, we take care of all the nice flavors in the fish. So we put it in the oven, it's 150 degrees in the oven. But uh, what about the temperature inside the fish? Uh, the, the, uh, the core temperature should be uh, 48, 49 or 50, and we're going to check that, or you're going to check it. I can, on the way. I can. Yep. all right. Okay, let's uh, move on to um, the next uh, dish we're going to prepare. So we have to clean a little bit away here. Should I help you for that? Yes, maybe you can do okay, that. Okay, I will. And um, to make sure that we make some dishes for you, that we, we, um, we will show you the the nice ways of, of preparing halibut, that you can use different ways of, of cooking it. So now we're going to do the, um, the pan fried one. Uh, we have the nice piece here, they're going to put a little bit of salt on it. You can also use salt brine if you want to put the fish inside uh, salt brine. Then you put uh, a cold salt brine that you dissolve as much salt as you can in water. It's about 10% uh, in cold water. And then you put the fish inside for 10 minutes. Uh, now I put salt on and we're going to make one green pea uh, puree uh, and meanwhile the salt will go into the fish. So I think we put this over there, um, Thomas, and yep. then we're going to make the, um, uh, the nice little uh, puree of uh, green peas. And this is also about colors and also about uh, nice, uh, nice uh, taste for, for our fish. Um, so we're going to put on the um, pot here. Fresh green peas, some butter. You have some cream in the fridge uh, maybe, uh, yes. Thomas? Yes. And um, I have one shallot here that I want to use. So we start with... Um, Finally chop a little bit shallots.
and put this inside there. Put it down to medium heat, I think. Be enough. But you don't use any oil or nothing in here now? No, we're going to put a little bit of uh, butter inside. All right. So you can... Uh, I will take a spoon here and... Put inside some uh, butter. And then we're going to bring our uh, green peas inside. And um, when the butter has been all around the, uh, the peas and the onion, we will uh, bring some cream and cook it. Like this. Then I think we may, may not need any more of this. Uh, when we're pan frying the sterling halibut, it's important that we are showing you the whole thing and when we're going to do that we're going to do it uh, after we have made uh, uh, the puree because the puree should be ready and all the other things that you're going to serve with the halibut should be ready before you start the cooking the halibut because if uh, you are waiting uh, for the garnishes when the halibut is done the may your halibut may be overcooked and we are really concerned that people are overcooking our halibut because if you have go increase those temperatures that I mentioned, 48, 49, 50, they will be uh, dry halibut. And dry yeah. halibut is not good. It's not good at all. But, yeah. And also remember that uh, we are producing the halibut and it takes five years to produce. So it's terrible for us to see like a cook or something gonna destroy the fish in like 10, 15 seconds yeah. that we are gonna use five years to produce. That's true. Yeah. So we actually use a lot of time to explain to the chefs around in the world that we are um, make make sure that they uh, f cook it correct. Yeah. And also that they have the feeling of so many years of making our fantastic fish, because our uh, colleagues that is around now in also in bad weather uh, taking care of our fish. It needs to be have a respect for those, um, and it's also about using um, the sustainability word about halibut because we're going to prepare prepare a dish. You should make sure that your guest will eat it, of and actually the guest will not eat it when it's too dry the the fish. Um, and I have been growing up with my mom that she was cooking all the fish over. So we make sure that it was so dry that if we didn't get any sauce, we could not eat it. So it's in, I have been saying my whole life that they're gonna <laughs> make sure that I make smooth, juicy fish, because then I think also the kids will love the fish. And uh, maybe that's the best, tricks, uh, best tip to make sure your kids is eating fish, make it moist, boneless, and introduce it in a fantastic way. And Sterling Halibut is fantastic for that. Huh? Correct, correct. Okay, um, green peas don't need to, to cook too long to make sure that it's uh, only that it's the heat going through. And then we're gonna put it in the blender. And then we're gonna make a little bit noise here. Um, so we get a green nice puree uh, to assemble our uh, next dish. We cook a little bit more, or do you think it's enough? I think it's enough. Yeah, I think we stopped there. Okay, then we put it into the blender. And when you blend things that is warm or hot, Make sure that you have the lid to not be too, uh, too, uh, too closed because then it will uh, get a vacuum and it will get all around. So give it a little bit some, uh, give it some air and we will have a nice... Uh, then we're going to put this on.
pan. One more pan. What a fantastic color, Frode. Yeah. This should go perfect with our white fish. Of course. And uh, also nice to use this, um, this uh, puree for, for, for fish uh, because it makes, uh, as Thomas mentioned, it's nice color. Uh, and also nice flavors for the fish because actually the sterling white halibut you can put like most of the things uh, and different tastes uh, together with the halibut and it it, uh, it fits quite well all tastes but uh, this is for for keeping the nice color um, around and also to give a little bit um, uh, good uh, sweet flavor to the dish Okay, then we have the puree ready. Then we have to taste it. Um, so many um, chefs that is uh, not taking care of the taste and you have, you have to taste. So here we put some salt. And we will put some... Um, Do you think I can taste as well, Frode? I think you should taste also. Yes, perfect. And some uh, cayenne pepper. No, he can taste because now I have put something inside. Very good. And you see, nice color. Okay, you can taste. I will try. Perfect for them. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and make uh, the pan frying happening. Um, and uh, then we just keep this uh, warm over there on one and then we take the pan there yes this one yes yeah. one fantastic it's a good pan and it's nice that you use a non-stick pan um, to make sure that you you will not have the fish um, back in the pan you should have an, a, a good um, non-stick pan that helps a lot okay um, you can bring some butter please of course and we start always when pan frying the fish, I will always start with some uh, sunflower oil that is not tasting anything, but just for having a um, high temperature uh, to get a nice color. And if you use the, the oil first, you will have much more control on the temperature. If you start with butter, the butter will easily burn before you get the nice flavor, uh, nice um, color of the, of the frying on the fish. So. Let's um, get the heat on here now, and then we will start to put the fish inside. And you can look at this. Fantastic fish, white, and you can see the fat that I was mentioned between. So that's the reason I put the skin on. Keep the skin on, helps a lot. Okay, you think the pan, pan is ready? We can try to hear, um, listen to the sound. The sound is good, huh? Very nice. And the skin is very easy to remove afterwards? Of course, yep. it's very easy. And you will see that. We're going to remove it before we serve it. And we'll, you will see um, easily how, how nice it uh, gets off. And then you will keep the, the fat on the fish. So now let's uh, st uh, let it be there to get this nice color. I will... Um, I will think that I need a little bit more time, a little bit more oil. So remember now we have everything ready for the dish. So we are just waiting for the fish um, and we're going to make the sauce out of what we have in the pan. Actually some juice of the pan. Okay, tarragon from the garden. Uh, you can also use uh, thyme or you can build other um, herbs, but uh, I feel that tarragon goes very well with our halibut. And I have this um, garlic. They're gonna just crush like this. And let's put that in the pan also. And then, of course, one of the most important things for chefs and us is butter. Huh? A if lot we, of butter. If we use butter, it will everything taste much better. Huh? So. Even the sterling halibut tastes but better with some uh, butter. Now we're just going to take a look 
if we have got the color that I was thinking. If you can see here now, we start to get this nice color. You see, Thomas? Wow. And then we put in the butter and then we reduce the heat in the pan. So now we go down. And then we turn the fish. We turn the sterling halibut around and you can see this nice color there. And then we continue with pan frying. We put the, the flavored butter and with the tarragon and with the garlic. Maybe I actually add some more butter. And we're gonna put this over the fish like this. And I really should think that you should feel the smell through the camera now because this smell is fantastic. I don't think I know any people that don't like this. No. It's, it's very, very nice. The flavor of uh, caramelized butter and of course our lovely sterling white halibut that is inside here. And I think you, you see that uh, our um, colleagues will be proud when they see this fish. Um, in this pan for the global world to see this fish from our small fjords but very deep and cold fjords and they will see how nice we have treated the fish and we're gonna serve it. So this need now some minutes and you have to be careful here because it very easily get over. So we have to be here and we have to take um, notice on the fish all the time before we start to put uh, the plate ready. So maybe you can put find the plate, um, Thomas. Yes. And maybe a little white plate. Yes. Yes, one. Well, yes, okay. Ah, fantastic. Just put it here. Yeah. Uh, but for the, what about the fish in the oven? Yeah. Maybe we you should check it. Should I check it? Yeah. You you were telling me that you're gonna check it. Oh, I right. have the thermometer over there that you're gonna check because feel when you cook halibut, when you cook fish in general, or when you cook in general also, you should feel on your product all the way. Just check and check. Make sure that it not get over. You can see how it starts to get very white and nice. Oh, it's going to be a nice one. I think so. You see, it's and what uh, was the temperature again? It's 48, 49, 50. And now we are on, on 18. So we have some time left, huh? All right. I will put it back in. Thank you. And when I put the skin down like this, the fat from between the skin and the fish meat will be um, make, make sure that the fish is not getting dry. So it's a very nice way of, of doing this pan frying like this. And I think maybe we should stop around here and make sure that we have all the rest things around ready. Then I slow a little bit more down. Still the flavors is amazing here. And it smells amazing as Ooh, well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I had some um, some nice thing to put on here. Actually, this morning I went to the garden and uh, I picked the last sugar. Um, sugar snaps and, uh, and this uh, small piece from the garden. So I've cut some of them and I take some of the flowers also that we can put on the plate. So then we have um, the green piece in, in flower and in, in leaves and we have them in, in actually in cut it before they even get the green piece inside. So then we have used the whole, whole green pea that we can use. And here I have some, uh, ter uh, some uh, chopped uh, parsley we're going to bring into the sauce with some lemon. And you have some green oil maybe? Of course. Some of herb course. oil that we made yes, also of the rest of the parsley. Um, okay, I think.
think actually we can go ahead and make the make the dish ready. Um, we'll just take a, another check with the fish. Oh, I know if you can see it here, but you can see the moist of the fish that they have this nice little. You see this? It looks oh. so juicy. Yeah, and it is. Okay. For making this um, juice of the pan, we just take uh, a little bit of the um, uh, parsley and we take some lemon juice. This is also about cooking and use all the flavors that you have in your pan. Okay. And to heat this a little bit also, we can do it in, this, uh, in the pan. Like this. And then we take another, if you have, find me one of this with the yep. paper on. So we can dry and wipe the fish a little bit before we put it on the plate. Okay. Now we have cooked the sugar snaps a little bit and then put that also on. And then you have the soft green pea puree and then you have the, the crisp one that is from the garden and we're going to add some flowers afterwards. Then we have the, the fish that we're going to take off the, uh, off the pan. We're going to See you now how easily we can get off the skin, like this. And if you see here, you can see some of this fat of the skin that we're going to bring together with the fish on uh, the plate. Then we turn it one more time, take away the tarragon and replace it like this. And we're going to Push away this, uh, Thomas. Yes. Um, and then we have the juice of the pan here. It's going to be our sauce that we're taking around here. And then some uh, green oil. Wow. And then we put some of this nice green flowers on top here. Maybe one more, like this. There we have one more dish. It looks amazing, Bruder. And uh, please enjoy, people. You should, maybe we should try to send it through the camera. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you want to <laughs> give it a try? Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> then we're going to clean away a little bit and then we're going to continue with the next dish, which will be the one that is baked in the oven. Yes, it yep. was quite fast to clean. Uh, clean kitchen is very nice uh, when we're going to work uh, with uh, our fantastic uh, white, uh, sterling white halibut. And now we're going to make um, the dish that you have been working with all day, uh, Thomas. Yes, all been, day, all day. You have been looking in the oven and taking care of the fish that is going to be baked in the oven for a nice temperature of 48, 49 or 50 inside. So we're going to check if Thomas or me had done the good job uh, afterwards. But first of all, it's important, like we mentioned in the beginning of our uh, class, that it's, we're going to use the whole halibut. And the head is also one part of the halibut. And um, we're going to make the stock, that we're going to make the sauce for this dish. Um, the halibut head has been, then I had been removed the eyes, and I had taken out the gills, so it's clean. And then I have been in running water for a while, so it's all clean. Then I put it in a casserole, like this, and we're gonna add water inside. Mm. 
And it's an old saying in Norway that um, the oldest person in the house should eat the head of the fish. Um, so, who of us yeah, going to eat? I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, when we're going to make stock out of halibut, it's important in the first four minutes uh, to make sure that it's not um, uh, cooked too, too heavily. And then we're going to like poach it for about half an hour. That's a nice time of cooking uh, for our stock, a fish stock. Um, I don't add anything except a little bit salt inside. No greens? No greens. No? Because I want to have the pure taste of our fantastic fish. And um, of course it will take a little bit long time to wait for us to make the stock. So I have been um, preparing some stock before. But um, I want to show you this, how we do it. And also that we using the whole fish is important for us. And it's important for you to also remember to use the whole fish when we have bought a sterling white halibut. And the halibut has also two cheeks. Um, the cheeks is very nice, very tender. Correct. Uh, and when you poach it like this, you can take out the cheek afterwards and you can use it for a little salad or like a little amisbouche and serve it as a little nice dish to tell the story about that you have used the whole fish. So that's a nice thing. Okay, let me sh uh, show you the ready stock. Um, which I have here. Um, this I have reduced a little bit, and then I'm going to reduce it a little bit more. And when I say a little bit, it's about 30% uh, down. So 30% water off, and then we have 70 of nice, fantastic, uh, good uh, sterling white halibut stock. And then we're going to make the sauce. Uh, that is a classic Norwegian cream sauce. Uh, with some white wine, with some um, uh, cream and of, of course the stock and then we add some butter and chives and we're gonna put some Leurum caviar in the oh, end. Oh, I like so that. So, let's start with the sauce. Um, bring um, the... Um, maybe you can find some white wine or you have to drink it? No, no, I think I have it in here actually. That's good. I think I will have it. Yes. Put, um, as I mentioned, a little bit salt inside. Uh, the, the stock. Not too much because we're going to reduce it afterwards. But it's a little bit to just take all the taste out of the, um, the, the head. Okay, some uh, wine. The rest for you. Perfect, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, you have to help me a little bit more, so you don't go away oh, okay, too, I will come back. too long. Huh? <laughs> okay, um, then we add the, the stock. I think we take this is enough. Yep. Because we're just making a little amount of sauce now. Um, as you see here now, it starts to get small white particles out of the stock. And then it's important that you have ready... Um, to clean away this, um, these things. Oh, make a little bit noise there. So you have this ready to uh, take away. Okay, uh, a little bit about the rest of the things that we're gonna put on this dish, because I love fennel. Uh, fennel is one of my favorite uh, vegetables. And on a little island uh, outside uh, Rifilke, where we take care, take care of our halibut, uh, is in the southwest part of uh, Norway. Um, we have a producer called Frode that makes fantastic, uh, nice um, uh, vegetables. And he has made me, got me some nice uh, mini uh, fennel that I have baked in the oven with a little, little bit lemon that we're going to use on the dish. And I have also some uh, that I have been shaving up like a crudité. Yep. Okay, it was cooking quite well. Huh? Yeah, Should we bake a little bit more? Yeah. yeah. It was good that you were here taking yes, care of it. Yes, that's why I'm here. That's why um, I'm here. And about what you're going to serve um, on the side of our halibut. We are just telling you that you can use like all your favorite things. You cannot, you, you don't need to use like what we say or what we, uh, the recipe recommend. Try to be a little bit playful and, and do different things. Because um, I think the best dishes is uh, yet to come if we are doing 
uh, a good good uh, variation in our homes and take what we have and that's also sustainability to use what you have don't just go around with your car to pick up uh, ingredients just say oh this i have let's make something of this um, but let the fish shine on the plate of, of course. course and make sure that the sterling white uh, halibut is shining on your plate yep. in a big, big portion, of course, because we want to sell much as uh, fish as we can. Of course. Um, a little bit cream also in this sauce. I think we can try to get a little bit higher now. Like this. And now you can see the, um, the, the head that we are cooking here. We start to get a, mo a lot of the whites up and this you have to push away, huh? so we get a clear and nice stock. Then we add some cream in this sauce. Then you can bring, put this back. Yep. And then um, let us um, reduce this to its thicken a little bit, and then we add the butter. And then we're going to make sure. I think you can put the fennel together with um, the halibut in the oven. In the oven? In okay. the end. And yeah. maybe in uh, two seconds you have to check the halibut also. That we make sure that you don't overcook it. Huh? All right. Okay, then you check the temperature. I will. Oh, it's almost there. It's if you perfect. can, um, it's now 46. Should you just leave it outside? Or? I think so. Yeah. Because actually the temperature in the halibut is increasing a little bit after you take it out, uh, out also. Because the heat on the halibut is going in, not out. Uh, and also, the, remember, we have the skin on here to take care and make sure that um, to isolate. So it's not running any, any heat anyway. And that, of course, the taste. Okay, then my stock is cooking, so I have to do turn it down because now it's going to just simmer very slow in half an hour and then you have this nice stock you can see here now when I take away this so nice and again you should have the the smell through the camera that will be the next level of of uh, live shows and see here now how nice it uh, starts to poach the nice head of the, the halibut. And then we can truly say that we have used the whole halibut. Correct. Okay, we should bring some butter here, and Thomas. Yep. As uh, one of my um, colleagues said, that is one thing that is better than butter, and that's more butter. Um, and then I think this is one of the favorite ingredients we have, uh, in, uh, also in Norway, but in other uh, countries also. I think cream is important. And then we start to push in the, um, the, the butter in the sauce. What do you think, Thomas? It is, um, is enough butter? No. I think a little bit more, actually. Yeah. And... Uh, I also want you to, to understand that when you are cooking halibut, it's, it's like, like a little party in itself, huh? because you can tell the story about this uh, deep fjords that is cold water in Norway, where we farmed our fantastic sterling white halibut that is make you so nice food that you can bring to your friends and your colleagues and your guests. Um, and this fish you can get all over the world, can't you, Thomas? Of course. Almost? Of course. Almost all over. Almost all over. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you can, uh, we have been um, promoting the fish, and, you, and uh, many of uh, the World Chefs uh, members uh, know that we have used this f fish for competitions and right. have been in the, in the Global uh, Chef uh, uh, Challenge and also in the big uh, competitions um, that we are looking for the best chef to prepare our fish and it's not so easy because of this temperature as we talk about but also for the young chef uh, challenges yeah competitions yeah and we are we are really 
uh, really, really up for, for supporting the young chefs because they are, they are the future actually, not me and you. Uh, it's actually the, the young chefs that are the future. And uh, we actually want more young chefs to, to see on sustainability, to use more fish, to use more vegetables, to use more uh, good ingredients in cooking and also to make sure that they use the whole ingredients. And I think the young chefs will be very good in this one. Yep, yep. Okay, I think we are starting to get there. A little bit more maybe. More butter? Yeah. Perfect. You want to take some spoons and we can taste? Of course. I also want to taste the, the stock actually, because um, um, this will give you the flavor of, ooh, so good, so good. And um, a nice, nice way of using the whole thing up. Huh? Okay, a new spoon, clean spoon, and then we taste um, this one. Ooh, nice. That will become very good. Um, I think we're going to use the, um, this one. Do you have a... I think I put it down here. Okay. Can you find the caviar and the chives, please? Yes. Yep. Okay, um, what we're going to put on the halibut now after we're going to undress it, we take off the, um, the skin and then we're going to push on the, um, a little bit salt because we don't have add, add any salt here now. And I hope that you have learned through this cookout with us that you, you, have, to s you have to feel the food all the time. Huh? You have to check the temperature, you have to know the, the, the feeling of the sauces and the stock to make the flavors coming through so you can see actually how the sterling white halibut is, t is tasting. And I think, uh, Thomas, that you should explain them a little bit in short notice about how we are taking care of the fish and how long we can take care of the fish as long as I take, uh, finish the, the sauce. Yeah. Uh, as we have spoken about before, it takes five years to take care of the fish and make it from egg until it's ready in the box. And we have over 40 employees that use the day every day to, to make this fantastic product that we have. Yep. And also for the, I was thinking about this, this uh, uh, steak here. Yep. It's uh, perfect to, to serve like a uh, whole family, to bring yeah. the family together and eat. And bring friends. Yeah. And maybe one of the challenges we can give you is that you should invite someone that you don't know to your table. So you can be like um, to host a little party with Sterling White Halibut and you can tell the story about the, the fish. And now no, we have walked you through the, the story about the fish and how you can easily cook it. Um, and invite someone to share the nice uh, taste of the of the halibut. But I think it's very very cool to, to serve like the whole fish yep. on on, on, the, on the dinner table. Yeah, yeah. Can you take out the fennel, please, and then give uh, from the oven, and then maybe take a plate. Yeah. So we can start to assemble. You like this big plate here for them? That will be nice. And remember uh, warm plates and ho or hot plates when you uh, are assembling fish because that helps you a little bit to serve uh, nice and warm fish. Um, put it in a smaller pan. And then we're gonna foam it a little bit.
it is. And um, then I think we are quite close ready. Um, I want to divide this one in, uh, in two. To put it on the plate. It's quite warm, but I think it will be nice. And then um, some of the crudité under here. So we have to have two tastes of, uh, of fennel. Uh, that is the one that is shaped. And um, I will also put in some, um, yeah, we're we ready for this one. And we're going to put a new, and then we have the leirum, the caviar. Put this one inside there. And also some of the chives that I have chopped. And then you bring in the warm sauce. Like this. This looks amazing for that. And then, then you can see. Ooh. Ooh, yes. It'll be nice, huh? And nice flavors for the for our halibut. And then the big moment of um, of how we had um, done with our warm fish, huh? Yeah. The main uh, part. The main part. part. So now I bring on my gloves because I'm gonna touch it when it's warm and re just before serving. And um, I think we also have some more fennel thing we can put on. Actually, I put also some fennel uh, flowers we can use. Oh, I want uh, this, uh, this sauce. Is yes. Good, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, when we're going to take off the skin, it's very easy. You can see it, you can just fold it off like this. And look how juicy it is. Yeah. Look at this. I had done this many times, but every time is very special. Because then I think about all the people that has worked with this fish and the passion they show. Passion, passion. The passion for the fish, the passion for the taste and the flavors for you to come on the plate. It's so fantastic. Then I put some salt and look at this. Huh? Then I'm going to bring a little spoon. To take it off the bone and put it on the plate. Look at this juicy and nice fish. You can see it. And then sauce. Around like this. And then some. Uh, fennel flowers to be around here and it actually this fennel flowers is tasting a lot of fennel so it gives a l much more rich flavor to the to the dish like this and then uh, we have to wipe the plate a little bit uh, Thomas I see it need a little um, yeah. wipe off with um, paper towel remember when you present present the food like this and I think you can easily eat this on, yeah, actually every day a week. Yeah. You don't need to be a Monday or you don't need to be a Sunday. Actually, every day in the week you can have this kind of fish. And share the moment with someone. And uh, I hope now through these three dishes that you have uh, seen how fantastic our sterling white halibut is, how proud we are, how passionate we are about serving you this fish. And Thomas, we will really looking forward to see you cooking our sterling white halibut around the world. So please give us some pictures on Instagram or on Facebook yep. and share with us your sterling white halibut moment and dish and happy cooking people.